So we looked at this problem of um, compound insulation. How do we solve this problem? We've got a wall structure with um, some wooden posts in it and the rest of its insulation. Um, we can solve it by um, first of all splitting the wall up like this in parallel. Um, so we can work out each layer using the parallel calculation and then we can put them in series or we can do it the other way around we can look at them in series first and then calculate the parallel and um, those were the quantities the data um, hopefully you followed these steps um, to work out what the calculations were and what we're going to find is that there are two different answers. There's a different answer depending on whether you do parallel first or series first. There's not a huge difference, um, but they're not the same. It's not the same answer. And this is a bit strange. So if you do um, if you do a calculation twice and you get a different answer, then that could mean one of three things. It could mean that one of the calculations is wrong. It could mean the other calculation is wrong. Or it could mean that both calculations are wrong. So um, in this case, I think both of the answers are wrong. Um, and we need to find out where the mistake is. Um, so this was our procedure. This was the, this was the problem solving procedure. procedure. And I think probably we checked, I think we've done the calculations correctly. There's not a problem there. I think the problem we've, we've formulated, the problem is probably not bad. But I think there's, a, there's, there's probably a mistake in one of the equations that we used. Um, and one of these equations is wrong. Which one do you think is wrong? I think the parallel one is wrong, and I'll show you why I think it's wrong. What happens with heat flow is you do get heat flowing through one insulator. It will flow more quickly through the worse insulator, so the, the part of the wall that has a higher U value, the heat's going to move more quickly. And you're going to get some heat going from there into the other insulator. So what's happening is um, the heat's not just going in one direction. It's also going um, in a second dimension. So you've got two dimensional heat flow and our equations only work for one dimension. So to get a, a real answer to this, you need to model it. And there's a technique that's called finite element analysis, which uh, good news is you don't have to do this by hand. Computers can do it for you. And the way they work is um, you start off by telling the computer your wall structure. So the wall structure may be something like this. And... Um, the computer will break this up into lots of little elements and then it will work out what's happening in the heat flow in each of these little boxes and it will then go back to the beginning calculate again go back to the beginning calculate again and keep calculating until it gets the same answer or it gets a close answer um, twice in a row and then it will give you a picture of what's happening and it can show you then the actual heat flux so the red areas and the white areas are where there's more heat moving so as you can see in this around where the wood is you get more heat flow but it's not just a simple um it's not a simple straight line um, similarly if you look at the temperatures across the wall structure now if it's just insulation you get a nice even rainbow a nice even temperature um, the wood of course is insulating less so it's conducting more so there's less temperature difference across the wood so you don't get a simple picture um, you also get corners 
in a building. So as well as buildings having um, different compound insulation, different structural parts in the walls, you'll also get um, a corner. So what's going to happen with heat flow in the corner? We know we can easily calculate the wall, or we've just found out it's not actually that easy to calculate the wall. Um, the corners may make a difference too. And um, is this corner the same as this corner? And the same as this corner? And um, what about this corner? And how about if there's if there's an outside, an inside corner, or an outside corner? So uh, some walls may have a corner going the other way. Will this be the same? Um, they will all presumably be different. I wonder which one is, um, which corner, which of these, I wonder, has the best insulation, which of these corners will lose the less heat, the least heat. If we just calculate in the wall size, then they, they're all going to be the same. But um, I, I think they're probably, I think the top right one's probably going to be the worst. And I would guess the bottom left will be the best one. Um, because the surface area is less. It may be quite difficult to make. Um, so yeah, that's that's a, that's something else to think about. Um, and what we've been talking about is known as thermal bridging. And um, thermal bridging happens at all edges and corners of a building. Um, all joins, where you have two different materials joining each other in the wall. Uh, some points in the wall, you may get a, th a thermal bridge. For example, if there's a pipe going through the wall or a big 12-inch nail stuck into the wall. Um, and as you get more insulation, these become more significant. So if you, have, if you don't have much insulation in your house, it doesn't make a big difference how the joints between the windows and the walls or how the corners are. But as you put more insulation on the walls, um, heat will find the easiest way out. And if there's a gap between well, one insulated area and another insulated area, the heat's just going to escape through the gap. Um, that's, so that's called thermal bridging. And it's usually measured, um, you can measure it um, with what's called a psi value, which is a Greek letter. Um, it's measured in watts per Kelvin meter. So it's usually measured by length. Um, it can be negative. So some wall structures, uh, you can put together two different parts of a wall in such a way that the, the joint is better than either of the two bits of wall. Um, it's usually not. Um, so have a look at, just look around your room, look around your house. How, how many thermal bridges can you see? So how many places around your room can you see where the wall is just one material that you can calculate? Here's the U value. And how many places around your room are there where you're joining together two different elements with two different U values? And there may be another extra heat loss from the joint. Um, that's something we'll think about, that's something we'll talk about later. And in the meantime, let's just um, go through the what we've learned so far about basic design of a building that's going to help us to make a low energy building. Um, and the first thing, as we talked about last time, is form factor. So the shape of the building will make a difference to how easy it is to make a low energy building. Um, we probably want the insulation on the outside. That's probably the best place to put it. And beware of thermal bridges. So you can't just throw insulation onto your house and hope it will be better. The insulation needs to be all around the house and the gaps between insulation or where one kind of insulation joins another um, those are important and those will make a big difference. And as your building gets more insulation, those thermal bridges become more important. Good luck.